the poem who can be considered to be a continuum of the thought that was built in the poem invitation it is a metaphysical lyric with a mysterious quality in the poem sri arabindo raises some questions on the identity of the almighty and the questions that he puts forward are themselves suggestive of the answers the poem leads us directly into the mysteries of existence and creates many images that point out to the one who is the master of the universe in the first stanza the speaker of the poem is mesmerized seeing the beauty of nature around him and with a childlike curiosity wants to know the identity of the power responsible for the creation of the world he is inquisitive to find out the identity of the painter who painted the skies azure blue and valleys verdant green he is also curious to know who it was who awakened the winds from their deep slumber and signaled them to blow in the second stanza the speaker suggests some possible hints to the questions he puts forward in the first stanza the speaker is somehow aware that it is the same energy that pervades the entire cosmos in nature in the human mind in the fragrant flowers that blossom in the millions of stars that shine in the night sky the speaker holds the key to the creation of cosmos but is at to open the door in the next stanza the speaker's quest intensifies he gradually comes to the realization that he is omnipotent and has the power to coexist in opposites caught in the strength of a man in the beauty of woman in the laugh of a boy in the blush of a girl the hand that sent jupiter spinning through heaven spends all its cunning to fashion a curl uncaught these lines also bring to mind william blake's theory of contraries which states that without contraries there is no progression and that paradoxes and contraries are essential part of nature in his the marriage of heaven and hell blake states caught without contraries there is no progression attraction and repulsion reason and energy love and hate are necessary to human existence from these contraries spring what the religions call good and evil good is the passive that obeys reason evil is the active springing from energy good is heaven evil is hell uncaught as it is evident from the first stanza the speaker is looking for him everywhere in the clear blue skies in the lush green valleys in the laughter of a boy and in the blush of a girl however he is unable to meet him the god face to face which brings about a kind of desperation in him he is impatient to meet him he cries out in anguish saying that although he is able to see him through his creation and experience him in a mysterious way yet he is unaware of his true identity the seeker alludes to the hindu gods and goddesses to seek identification with him again he invokes the contraries brahma the creator vishnu the preserver the sakar as well as the nirakar aspects the speaker carries forward this idea in the next stanza as well as brings to the fore the dual nature of god when he says that since time immemorial he is being worshiped through his many manifestations he is worshiped in the form of the magnificent bal gopal as well as in the form of the fierce blood thirsty kali he is also shiva the tapasvi who does meditation atop the snow-clad himalayas oblivious of the world 
The speaker is just one of us who at times falters in his quest. He does not seem to understand God's design in the larger scheme of things and complains when adversity befalls him. He says that at times the ways of God seem unjust to him. To him God too is idiosyncratic and governs the world according to his whims. Caught in his rapture of torture and passion and pain uncaught like any other unrealized soul he is shaken in his faith whenever adversities befall him he further accuses god of taking pleasure in causing pain and suffering to ordinary mortals however when things fall into place he starts seeing god as a magnanimous being again if the mysteries that confronted the seeker in the earlier stanzas now seem revealed before his eyes he now realizes that all music that pervades the earth is nothing else but an echo of his laughter and all the beauty that we witness around us is his gift to us Our very existence is a testimony of God's presence. The next stanza highlights God's omnipotent nature. Once again, the Indian concept of his personality is projected as he is shown riding his chariot, slaying about demons that go about vandalizing the world, wreaking havoc on innocent people, thereby hinting at Krishna. The speaker tries to find him by the means of various attributes that human beings have tried to bestow upon him yet he remains ineffable and incomprehensible he is some greater force at work which cannot be grasped by the limited logic of our ignorant minds in the final stanza the seeker says that god is man's guardian and his master he is present everywhere even in the deepest recesses of our hearts where we can seek him through love it is only because we are blinded with our pride hypocrisy and selfishness that he remains veiled from us what we need to remind ourselves when reading this poem is that sri arabindo is constantly hinting at god's power to coexist in contraries always remember it is the same movement what goes up also comes down it is the same energy that is responsible for the creation of the day as well as the night he is that ineffable power which novices like us cannot grasp for he is above us all and existed in latent form even before the creation of cosmos